Karen. Yes. Would you like to learn to work with higher consciousness and connect with the greater aspects of yourself? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Well, well, then how about discovering and learning how to work directly with your energetic anatomy, like your chakras and the aura? Oh, I would like that too. Okay. Well, how about accessing inner peace and calm and strengthening your resiliency in the face of everyday challenges? Yes to all of that. Mm, then you must surely be interested in awakening to your true essence and in empowering your own self-healing ability and learn how to work with others on their healing journey. Yes. Well, on this episode, we're going to dive into a healing modality that claims to integrate science into energy healing. That's right up your alley. Right up my alley. And we're going to chat with one of the founders of Field Dynamics and learn all about this brand new modern healing modality that is sweeping the world. This one may just change the world. And we're giving you a front row seat here on The Skeptic Metaphysicians. My name is Will. And I'm Karen. And unlike Mulder and Scully, we both want to believe. So we've embarked on a journey of discovery. We've talked to people deeply entrenched in the spiritual and metaphysical world. We've thrown ourselves into weird and wonderful experiences. I even joined a coven of witches. And wait, you joined a coven? Yep, all in the interest of finding something. Anything. That will prove that there's something beyond this physical. Three-dimensional world we all live in. This is The, the Skeptic, Skeptic Metaphysicians. Metaphysicians. Welcome to the Skeptic Metaphysicians. I'm Will. And I'm Karen. And I'm not sure I have the right words to help me introduce this next topic. So rather than give it a try, instead, I thought we'd share with you this video piece that our next guest created, explaining, in a way, what our topic of conversation is all about today. Now, take a look. So these important questions, who are we? How can we work with the challenges of the mind? trauma, the anxieties, and help resolve these things so that we can bring healing and wellness to our life. We created a comprehensive and professional training structure for people to have an experience and an education regarding energy healing and to find out how deep, how profound, how accessible this healing art form can be. It was really important to us to put together a type of training that we were looking for ourselves 10, 15 years ago. I feel more of a holistic connection with all parts of my being, body, mind, spirit. I feel more centered, more grounded and connected in who I am. I have a, a greater understanding of my own energy anatomy. And I have really a better understanding of how to work with other people's energy fields. Professionally, it's added a depth of quality to my work as a psychotherapist. I have a greater sense and knowledge of the whole aspect of a person that isn't just psychological, it's energetic, it's physical, it's spiritual. And this course has helped me really see how to work with that in a really structured, grounded way. I was able to get to a place where I had not been able to get to previous 40 years of my life. And in a very short time, I was able to do a lot of self-healing that gave me freedom that I have never felt through my entire life. I am more grounded. I am more centered. I feel more aligned. And when I get unaligned, I have these tools that just bring me right back into centeredness. This training is for you if you want to experience radical interconnectivity if you want profound transformation. You want to be of service to the world and you want to do it from a place that really meets the need of the human experience with all its dynamic qualities. We see that practices focused on energetic health will only be increasing in the coming decades.
All right. Head to toe, full body goosebumps after that. When she said, you want to change the world. Oh my, that just, it's like plug will directly into the system. That's perfection to me. Oh, it looked amazing. Mm, gosh, well, excited. It doesn't even come close to expressing my thoughts on today's show. And to help us dive deep into this modality, we have Keith Parker, who's one of the co-founders of Field Dynamics. And he's here with us today to talk to us about this incredible modality. Keith, welcome so much to the show. Hi, guys. Really glad to be here with both of you. We are thrilled to have you here, although we would rather be with you over there. Yes. <laughs> so the people that aren't getting to see this, go check it out on YouTube because it's a beautiful, beautiful retreat place. Yeah, it, it really, it's amazing. What a what an incredible place or, yeah, what an incredible place to, to learn how to heal yourself and others. I can just imagine. Was that in Bali? No, so that was actually a retreat we did last year in Yalapa, Mexico. Yalapa is not that well known. It's uh, outside of Puerto Vallarta. And we got together, packed out a retreat center there and had a, a week of just amazing transformational work. That was a retreat, not a training, but the, the people who were there, a lot of them have gone through our trainings and stuff. And I was, as you were playing that back, I was just remembering how just, it was such a wonderful experience, really fulfilling. Absolutely. I could see the smile. You had this huge smile on your face while we're watching it. And it just, it's infectious. It just, it makes you want to be there. All yeah. right. Let's dive into this because field dynamics, right? Before we started, full disclosure, you you were gracious enough to give Karen and I a, a session before we get started. And we'll talk about that later on, but let's set the table first so that people listening can really get a, an idea of what we just experienced. Field dynamics is an energy healing modality that is infused with science. What makes this so groundbreaking in your estimation? You know... We put this together, Christabel and I, because we saw a real opportunity, kind of a gap in the market that's out there for something that was very 21st century. This is an ancient practice. Energy healing goes back all the way to the beginning of time. You could even con consider you know, shamanic work as a, a certain connections into what we now call energy healing, although some people don't make those connections. But Christabel and I saw this great opportunity to kind of update the language to universalize the understanding, to make it very transparent, to make it non-proprietary, to be able to describe things in scientific language, to have things be grounded, to get it out of the woo-woo. You know, I, I we like to think of kind of transmuting the woo-woo from the the woo-woo to the like, woo-woo, you know, like, <laughs> like, you know, to kind of cheer it on because, because I think what we're seeing is a lot of these things we thought maybe we didn't know what to make sense of, didn't have the language for maybe 30, certainly 50 years ago. Uh, what we're finding now, for instance, within scientific discovery, cutting edge stuff like that, there's the same the same journey is happening in science as you might call like more of an esoteric kind of spirituality. And you kind of look at what's going on in science right now, what's really happening. So we're at the edge of a paradigm shift. I'm quite confident in that. And field dynamics is a modality that provides a training structure, a container for people to learn energy work in a contemporary way, in a really comprehensive and professional way for people who want to practice on themselves or want to do this professionally by working with others or just family and friends, et cetera, and to go through the transformational process. I mean, that's what that's what all healing work is about is inner transformation. And so we deliver that as, as a training experience. Mm. So a lot of people listening to this will think, oh, well, that's that's Reiki. And I know it's very different. So explain to us how this is different than Reiki. Explain to our audience. Yeah, I mean, Reiki is wonderful. I mean, Reiki is really what, what we all have to thank for the reference to what's called energy healing. You know, if you asked 100 people on the street, whatever the distribution would be, you know, a certain amount of people would have no idea what that meant. <laughs> and then the people who said, oh, yeah, I've heard of that. And if you said, sure, have you ever heard of a type? The majority of people who answer that as a yes are going to say Reiki. So it's the thing that's been the carrier wave for disseminating this to the public in general, to the Western world, to the world in general as a contemporary uh, practice. So Reiki is really wonderful. What we found is Reiki in general, you know, people go in and they tend to do about two days of training. Sometimes it's uh, pre-recorded classes, for instance, but often they do a couple days of training, maybe three days of training. I know there are different parameters because Reiki technically is decentralized. There's no like central body for it, but that's what most people's experience is. Maybe two, three days, they get the title of a master. And then they go out and they, they use the practice. And as we can see, it's been very effective for a, a number of different uses. 
But what we wanted to do was take all the experience that we had, Christabel and I studying lots of different modalities that were energy healing and otherwise mostly not energy healing stuff as our background and kind of put everything under the umbrella of energy healing and kind of tease it out such that we can see how energy healing can conform to and address a much wider variety, uh, a much wider, a uh, much larger topography and map of the human energy field, how to work with that, issues, how to work with that, um, and like levels and depths and explorations within the, how you can push the paradigm. You know, you, you, energy healing is hugely um, creative in nature, massively creative. And so that, we just didn't see that anywhere out there in the marketplace. So we basically designed the thing we ourselves would have wanted to have taken 10, 15 years ago. Mm. So the audience, uh, most of the audience, some of the audience, you know, so one guy listening to this uh, knows <laughs> that I am a Reiki practitioner. I was uh, a certified le level two, so I can do distance healing and things like that. But I hadn't used it in quite a while until recently. I went on a retreat thanks to a wonderful human being who insisted I go on this retreat. And I got reattuned with that, with that group over that weekend. And since then, I mean, it reminded me how amazing it is to have this energy flow through you and out your hands and into another human being, the connection that that creates between you and the person that you are working on is, is something I've not experienced ever beyond doing Reiki. I mean, it's an instant connection. Is field dynamics, is it similar where you are channeling universal energy through you and into someone? Do you make, does it, is it, does it make that instant connection with that person or are you doing something completely different than channeling energy into somebody? So there's some, there's some important, like critical core overlap in the idea of running energy and that energy coming from uh, spirit, if you will, source, a universal consciousness, whatever. There's lots of ways to dissect that, what that means, but it'll keep it top line and vague in a sense. But yeah, we're running energy with field dynamics. The thing is, it's a self-practice as much as it is for somebody else. In fact, the majority of people that we work with who come through the trainings, they're there for self-transformation and a self-practice. At least that's certainly what we emphasize and make sure happens because we understand that for people who do want to be working with others, the foundation of that is doing your own inner work. So this is like you said, change the world. You know, We really strongly believe that you know, part of the ethos of field dynamics is that it's a, up to us as individuals to change the collective. So it's not about making the world out there different. It's about making ourselves in here different. And then it carries over and translates into how we participate in the world. So that goes for you know, the way we approach our training structure is the majority of the emphasis is on a self-transformational process and self-healing and learning a self-practice. And then the skills with energy work wonderfully just translate over somewhat automatically pretty much everything you can do as a self-practice, you translate that over to working with others. And there's only so much modification there. We don't focus on energy coming through the hands as Reiki does. We see the energy circulating through the field and through the body, depending on how you kind of concentrate or direct things in, in concert with higher consciousness in terms of letting it flow through you, but also learning to kind of direct it. It's a little like surfing, like there's a, there's a force moving through you. But at the same time, you, you can learn to ride the wave and kind of cruise through it or, you know, like, or you could think of it as like a hose of water. So there's a pressure or a potency, but you can direct it. You can learn to direct it more and more accurately, the more kind of skillful you get with it. So I'd say that the core, the underlying, you know, principles are the same as Reiki, but we, we kind of go in, in different directions in certain respects. And now as someone who's not an expert in any of this <laughs> and not a Reiki master <laughs> or anything, I have had Reiki before, but to me, one of the big differences, and I, I don't know if it's just because I'm limited in my Reiki experiences, but I've never had someone guide me through it. And I right. really liked that. And then also there was that emotional aspect where we were kind of, you know, looking at some deep emotional issues. Yeah. Let's not give the oh, get cat sorry. out of the bag just yet. Oh, we're going to talk about experiences in a second, but yes. I, I, I just in general, yeah. I'm talking about my experience, but okay. it, it's not just like my leg hurts, fix it. It's like, there's something going on. Mm. And, and I liked how the, on the reel that you played, you know, there's a, someone who's a psychotherapist and she's mm -hmm. using this now with her patients. And I, I think that's fantastic. I think it's just, gosh, anything we can do to help heal every, especially with everything that's going on these days, it's taking such an emotional and mental toll on everybody. We need something like this desperately. Yeah. So thank you for what you're doing. Of course. Yeah. It's hard to describe in some ways what we're doing because it's hard enough to describe what energy healing is because that's not that's something that there's a, an agreed upon language 
to understand that. But we're using energy healing as the center point for lots of skills converging together. So we're looking at meditation, for instance, as, a, as the core thing, which is present moment awareness. And you could say that a meditator has a certain um, skill set. Now, we're, we're trying to help people to take that meditative mindset and approach. And then you add an energy healing practice. and All of a sudden, it hyper accelerates what would happen naturally in meditation, for instance. So if you saw an, a, a meditator's energy field, it'd be moving in a particular way. And the more skilled they get, the more flow they get in the field. That's a natural consequence of getting into deeper levels and deeper states of meditation. You're, the field dynamics of that are, follow a certain kind of energy flow where it, it organizes to higher levels. And then the meditator has different kinds of experience, which are described in meditation traditions as jhana and samadhi and things like that, like kind of advanced meditation. So energy healing is something where we're, we're teaching people it in the approach where you know you use a meditative mindset then you use the energy healing technique to create a lot more change. Like it's an ex a major accelerant to what's changing. And then you add to that things like tracking skills. So things like how do you notice where you're blocked? How do you follow energetic changes? Like you're kind of describing that I guided you guys through a bit in the practice we did. How do I notice blockage? How do I get blockage to change from various angles? And then even you know, broader than that, there's one other piece, which is really starting to understand the transformational process. So it means understanding your psyche, understanding patterns, how they work. And then if you start piecing these all together, you start to have a very integrated skill set that is very appealing to people who, you know, are psychotherapists, are doctors, lawyers, body workers, coaches, you know, shamanic practitioners, yogis, meditators, etc., other energy healing backgrounds. So the people that we work with are coming from every background imaginable. Some people literally have never done anything like this in their entire life and have never done anything in their like spiritual journey. And other people have spent 40 years meditating, practicing all kinds of modalities, energy work included. And everybody seems to just start at the same place. And because of the nature of the training and the, the kind of the comprehensive, multi-layered approach, it's really easy to kind of get on board wherever you're at. So let's dumb it down for me. Yeah, because you're talking all kinds of things that are amazing, but some of them may be going over my head. I need to make sure that I understand. Yeah. I believe that with Reiki, we do a little bit of energy work. I'm sorry, energy field work. But for the most part, we are working with the body somatically, mm -hmm. right? We are sending energy into some of our chakras or energy centers and things like that. But we do sometimes, and especially on some versions of Reiki, you do more with the energy field than than others. I was certified in the Yusui, the original Yusui method, so it's really truly somatic. However, field dynamics. When we were talking, you mentioned that it was about, and you in your website you talked about extrasensory perception. I think I understand where it's coming from, but you actually work with the person's energy field or the aura, which, the, the chakras as well, in Reiki. When you are getting attuned, you get symbols placed into your energy centers and your energy field, which allows you to align with these energies. What do you do with someone's aura? Do you manipulate it? Do you shift it? Do you drain it and refill it? What, how does that work? Sure. So, yeah, no, it's, it's great that you're, there's a, obviously, yeah, there's so much to cover in terms of the one-on-one type stuff. And, and yes. that's a great question you're asking. So, so. We're focusing on the energy field, but the thing is the body is in the field and everything that's going on in your body has a correlation or an analog in your energy field. So we can't work directly with the physical body because energy healing isn't physical. It doesn't start physically. It starts in, in the electromagnetic field, the energy field, the aura, but it works its way through the body in terms of how the field and the body are working. And we're seeing the edge of that, for instance, in science with things like bioelectricity but that's just the tip of the iceberg in terms of understanding the deeper nature of electromagnetic fields in relation to the sustenance or sustainment of the physical body. So in that sense, you could say that everything winds up back at the body and your body is in the field. So your body's in your field. It's not, it's not that your energy field stops at the edge of the skin and then there's the physical body. It's that the field is through the body. And the ancients would talk about this, like the yogis, they would say, well, there are, there are five elements or the, um, Greeks also said the same thing. There are five elements, the platonic solids. And they would use the four elements, the things that we're most familiar with in terms of elemental language, like water, you know, earth, fire, and air, those four elements. And then there's always a fifth element. That fifth element is called space or akasha or ether. And that's, that's the talking about 
that the other four elements are superimposed within nothing, within space, within ether. So that space element is your field. Your field is what seems empty, but is actually the container for all of the elements to kind of aggregate and create form. And your body is a, a certain kind of elemental form, but it's within the space. It's within the field. So when you get used to energy work, and if you can sense it really clearly through your own body, you could feel, in a sense, a wave of energy move right through your body. It can start in front of it and go straight through and go out the back because your field is, is happening. The electromagnetic grid, if you will, precedes the formation of the body, in a sense. And this is a, a major kind of working model that we have at Field Dynamics that we call the, a field-first model, where we understand that things happen in the field. There's a, like a causal thing going on where certain things are happening in the field before things happen physically, right? right? So, and people can understand this in terms of like, okay, well, you, what do you mean? Like energy before matter or mind before matter, you know? And yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Like if you're going to like bake a, a birthday cake for somebody, you have to think about baking the birthday cake. You have to think of it, you have to energetically create it. And then physically you can manifest it, if you will. And that leads us into what's in the field. <laughs> Right. It's interesting because I never, ever thought about the energy field going through me. I, I'm guilty as charged, right? My, I almost saw like our bodies generating the field. So the, there was no sense of the field inside of me. But now that makes a lot of sense. I need to rethink that in a big way. There's a, there's, <laughs> yeah, there's, no, there's a lot to that. There's a, boy, I mean, um, so my skill set in part, and I, I discussed this with you guys earlier, is I can, I can see the, the energy field really, really clearly as a byproduct of practices I did for a long time, a lot of meditation and healing work. I had a kind of significant opening where I could, I was just kind of granted this access in a sense, and I had to keep deepening, but it enabled me to see and feel the field with this remarkable kind of clarity. And I can, everything that's happening in my energy field, I see, and I can have that correlate feeling in my body simultaneously all the time. So that's what gives me a major insight into how to you know, be a co-founder of an energy healing modality and to understand the mechanics very clearly. And then I can take that self-study and then compare that to ancient you know, traditions, other clair living clairvoyance, people like Barbara Brennan, or looking at contemporary science and seeing how science is also talking about the nature of matter in relation to energy or the nature of how our brains are formatting or connecting to higher dimensions that are non-physical, things like that. So there's a lot there. And the emerging science is one of those interesting things where it's like, it doesn't sound like, it sounds like science fiction now, right now. Mm, yeah. yeah. All right. So we got a lot more to talk about, but we got to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about our experience, Karen and I's experience with the modality, because like you mentioned, you graciously gave us one before we started recording. But we're also going to touch on the big question that everyone listening is really dying to hear the answer to. Do we need to have psychic senses to be able to do this? We'll answer that and a lot more when we come back right after these messages. Now, welcome back to the Skeptic Metaphysicians. We are talking to Keith Parker. He's a co-founder of Field Dynamics. It's a modern energy modality that is so far above and beyond any energy healing modality I've ever experienced or talked to about. There's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. And we are, uh, we're just scratching the surface, I, I know, but I, we'll try to get to as many questions <laughs> as we can. But, um, Keith, right before the break, we were talking about the depth of the dimensionalities, uh, all the, like how deeply into the body and the energy fields and all that kind of stuff we, we get into when we start utilizing this modality. And right before the break, I asked the big question that everyone wants to hear, everyone wants the answers to, because uh, this sounds like you mentioned you were able to see energy fields really clearly. Well, I cannot. So does that mean I can't do this modality? Because that's going to make me really bummed out. No worries. You don't have to be bummed out at all. Anybody it's, can do this. Anybody can do this on day one. And it's really, really important that this isn't one. like day one, day one. We have a foundations training, for instance, that's just, you know, two days, just like Reiki would be a couple of days, a few days in general for most people, depending on the you know levels. We have a two day training that's 10 hours long and people have a self practice coming out of that right away. Energy healing works with the underlying mechanics of how things happen in terms of thought to uh, physicality. So nobody has to 
you know, work to learn how to work with directed thought or intention or invocation. Once you learn the underlying mechanics, you're off to the races and it'll, it'll work. The clarity of one's sensing is a totally different thing. So do you need to be psychic or extra sensitive to practice energy work? Not at all, not in the slightest. You can be 100% removed from sensitivity at all. But however, it helps. However, what happens is, is that as you practice, your sensitivity naturally will increase. And what that does Ooh. is it makes, it makes the, the texture or the feedback or the surface engagement of it more and more rich. So you'll get more and more data or information as you keep improving your sensing. And the cool thing is that you don't have to practice sensing enhancement or psychic development explicitly. It happens implicitly by the mere fact of doing the energy healing practice. So as you clarify your field, your self-perception and your perception in general gets more and more clear. So it's a it's like a co coincidental progressive kind of development. So basically your skill sets, your abilities tend to come out more the more you clear your energy field of all the debris and all that kind of stuff. Oh, big time. Uh, what our, what, so what our field is, okay, our field is comprised of thoughts and emotions. It's mental stuff. Now, this is the most, I think the most, for most people, just a very straightforward kind of big light bulb going off is, do you have an aura? The answer is 100%. I am, I am not even going to, there's no argument about do you have an aura or not. I'm, I guarantee that everybody has an aura. I don't care if it's scientific or not. I, I, it's just plain, plainly well, evident. Well, scientists would say the electromagnetic field, right? That's the aura. If you want to look at it in a pragmatic point of view. Yes, except that in, in no way whatsoever would any mainstream scientists say that there's proof of the aura at this point. It's not something that is considered like uh, shareable among scientists and above board, you know? And uh, well, that, I would say that they're, they're just big poopy heads then because everybody knows we have an aura. <laughs> we do have an aura and it's complex. It gets complex when you get into the nuance of it. This is where I I've, uh, have a book that's going to be coming out later this year. And I try, I go through this quite comprehensively about trying to build the building blocks to start to understand the structuring of the aura, which is definitely too complicated for our talk, but has to do with these words, higher dimensions, multidimensionality. And it's, it starts with the simplicity of electromagnetic fields, but it's about how do electromagnetic fields get structured into kind of deeper or more complex kind of architectures or information structures. And how does that relate to physical reality? And that's your aura is that it's 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 a bit more complex. But the simple thing is electromagnetic fields. Now that's the structure of it, but the content is what's happening with our mind, our thoughts, and our emotions. So again, I can see this. This is not something I'm saying new. You know, you can read all kinds of esoteric texts, other people who are living today that also can verify these kinds of things. When you're thinking, every th thought that you have is a form in your field. So we tend to think of the body as having the form as being like an object, right? Your mind also, in a sense, has an object. There's an objective aspect level, structured aspect of what we call the mind. So when you think there's just stuff happening in your field, when you have emotions, there's emotions being expressed in your field, if you can see it really clearly. Our field is very much reflective of what's going on mentally, and it kind of stores everything that's ever happened to us psychologically, in a sense. It's like a database of the mind, if you will. And so when we want to see ourselves clearly or perceive more clearly, that means clarifying our mind, clarifying the very thing through which we're perceiving everything in the first place. So mm -hmm. there's this wonderful, yeah, wonderful process that happens. And people that I've worked with, some people are you know, very sensitive. It is very common for people to be very empathic or have kind of certain kinds of, let's say, psychic abilities who get into subtle energy work. But just as many people I see coming through our trainings that are that are not, let's say, naturally gifted in these domains, there might be a little bit uh, intimidated by that aspect of it or not really know what to do with it. But nonetheless, they're attracted to doing this kind of practice. And I've seen people go from very let's say, poor sensing in terms of they don't get a lot of information, a lot of feedback when they're practicing to six months later, a year later, they're in an entirely different place and they have a lot of confidence in their ability to, to sense subtle energy. So can someone learn how to astral project from it? That's all I want to know. No, I'm, I'm just, just no, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, Karen, fine. Back away from the astral projecting. <laughs> no problem. Right. <laughs> well, then let's go ahead and, and dive a little bit into our experiences up with the, with the modality, because uh, it was really interesting. 
It was a truncated version. We only did like about, about a half hour one, but it was really interesting in as much that, to Karen's point earlier, you led us through it. Mm -hmm. And you did a lot of body sensing, right? Uh, feel your body before you start. And then as you're doing the energy work and things like that, then cha feel how things have cha are changing and what are you feeling in those energy centers and you went through the chakras and then you took a specific instance or, or challenge that we're dealing with and then visualize, you ha helped us to visualize a certain, I don't want to give it all away, a certain thing. And then we released it and how does it feel? So it was actually <laughs> kind of interesting because I had never experienced something like that before mm -hmm. other than like visualization practices and things like that. But this is kind of connected all together. So I want to usher in ladies first, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna Tell us about your experience mind. with field dynamics. Well, first of all, it was very relaxing. Hence the cup of coffee that I'm having because I had to perk myself back up after that. Yeah. But it, I had no idea what to expect. So, and and this is, I guess, sometimes, you know, you can feel something really strongly or, or lightly and some people don't feel anything. And that's kind of Keith, what you were telling us earlier. At first, I felt, I felt something like when you said at, after you kind of had us feeling our body and you said, okay, I'm going to put my energy in or I'm not sure what, how you worded it. I felt like very strongly like this heaviness, like I was attached to my chair, like I was being pulled in. And then that kind of dissipated. Actually, I coughed. And I think when I coughed, it, it went away. <laughs> I like shocked myself out of it. And then you went through the different chakras, which for me, I didn't feel a whole lot during that part until you got to the crown chakra. And that's when I started feeling kind of the tingling in my head. And I kind of felt like the chair was rocking a little bit back and forth, which was nice. I felt the sense of release kind of towards the end. But it was very interesting. And I did like how you guided us through it. I thought that was that was really helpful. Right. Well, uh, on, on my side of things, you know, everyone knows that I'm pretty dense. I don't feel energies very often unless it's like smack you in the face kind of obvious. And interestingly, you were having us feel individual chakra points. And I, I would say I could be making it up. Who knows? I've made up lots of worse things. Lots. But <laughs> you don't Sorry. have to go quite that far. Karen. I'm just agreeing and supporting uh -huh. you. Thank you. But each chakra point seemed to feel differently. Some of them were tight. Some of them were throbbing. Other ones were tingling to Kara's point. But it, again, it wasn't until we got to the crown that I actually felt like a tapping, like a physical, like like inside your skull, like tuck, 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 all the way around my skull, which was interesting. But it was like popping. It was, it was actually pretty cool. When we were in the heart chakra, I felt it opening, right? And this feeling of joy was like coming in. It was actually pretty, pretty amazing, which was really nice. It could be that I was just happy to be relaxed and meditating. Who knows? But it, it, it felt joyful. And then when you started talking about the, the thing, the challenge that we're experiencing, this is where I found it interesting because it almost seemed like a cross between, because you were doing some energy work and I, I had my eyes closed. So I don't know if you were waving your hands, if you were you know, shaking a chicken, I don't know what you were doing, but, <laughs> oh, but it seems like you were mixing psychology, visualization with energy work and then breath. I mean, it was kind of like a combination of a whole bunch of things. And then you had us feel emotions that were attached to this particular thing. And I did, I felt it. I felt sadness and sorrow. And it was a pretty deep, surprisingly uh, deep feeling of sadness that was attached to a situation that I didn't even realize were connected. And then when you had us put it all in the suitcase and release it, the sadness just kind of went away. And I don't know whether that was a, a symbol of you were nearing the end of the practice or if it was truly a release of the challenge, but I'm really curious to see what happens in the next 48 to 72 hours. Cause that's, you, you say, on your site, that's pretty much what you can expect for the next 48 to 72 hours. There's some, might be some changes and things like that. What can we expect now that we've had this treatment? Yeah, like you said, 48 to 72 hours, it's good to think of two to three days as a general window. It's very like parallel to, you know, the more and more I've talked about this over the years, the more I realize the mirror between physical and, and the energetic, or you could say the mental and the psychological in some ways in terms of what happens as a result of change. So if you go to the gym and you work out really hard and you, you know, do your biceps or something and you, you rip some muscle tissue and you want to build the muscle, you, you feel it the most two days later 
and maybe mm-hmm. three days later. So it's really similar in the field when things change in the energy field in terms of structures, there tends to be about a two to three day window of change. And what that means is you don't feel sore in your physical muscle, but instead you might feel the stimulation and the cycling of that which has changed kind of reorganizing itself. So if there was sadness that arises in somebody's experience in a session and, and the idea is that they're releasing that sadness in the session, maybe the next day or a couple of days later, they are in a funny mood that has a quality of sadness to them. And they might say, oh man, this is terrible. I thought that I worked through that sadness. But really what's happening is that basically that area that's been blocked or rigid, right, is actually starting to get fluid. And it's basically trying to repattern itself, trying to re-express itself in a new way to not be as identified with and as, as held in the in the energy system as it was before. Now, it doesn't mean that you necessarily will be sad as a result of releasing sadness. It could be that, that somebody's- next question. Yeah, somebody could be really, really happy and ecstatic, like very light and having had the proper process of release. It just, it goes any which way, depending on what the thing is, what stage of development and healing and transformation it is, and kind of just what needs to happen. And we trust the natural integration process always. But it's important to be mindful in those next two or three days in particular, because things can cycle as they're repatterning themselves naturally. Okay. So carry around a box of Kleenex with me. Got it. (laughs) You know, what we like to do is, like you guys were saying, we went through a kind of a scanning practice through the chakras. Now it's running energy. So there's this, right, there's this energy circulating in your in your systems. It was a group energy healing session, if you will. And I was guiding you guys through the chakras because they're great listening stations. Not only are they core to the energy anatomy, but as we were saying before, the most important real estate in your field is where your physical body is. <laughs> it's like, that's prime real estate, okay? That's where that's where you're looking at, right? That's what you feel mm-hmm. most clearly. So all of the chakras are where there's physical anatomy, physical tissue, physiology going on anyway. So it's really, really important for us to be in our centers, in our core, aligned through our centers. You know, this is the most important stuff going on physiologically. We have our spine, our bina cava, our aorta, we have all of the nerve plexes, we have our endocrine system, our immune system, everything is most centered right in the core of the body. So what we really want to do is start to get oriented towards connecting to that space and starting to potentially differentiate what's the energetic component, what's the physical component, because they're different sensing mechanisms, you know, like a body worker learns to sense physical tissue, right? And that's that's a somatic awareness. But an energy worker is learning to sense energy field. So that's electromagnetic, subtle energy sensing. They're, they're different. And you could learn to basically have a smooth uh, perception across both of those domains simultaneously. Mm. So we went through the chakras and that was about getting you guys to kind of locate it. And there's a, you know, an adage in a lot of energy healing work that where the attention goes, the energy flows. And this mm-hmm. is very similar to that. I think I said at the beginning, it's like a hose. It's like you, you, you're pointing the hose of the energy flow in your system in these areas. And in doing so, stimulating those areas, getting there to be more flow and potentially noticing what's changing because when you when you put the hose on it, a lot of stuff starts to move potentially. So we did that through the core and then I took you guys through what we, we call mapping an issue, which is where we start to see that energy healing is not only good for energy anatomy, but also we can work with it at the same time very dynamically, more so than we even did, but it was just a taster. Um, issues. So I can say, you know, what's that? I have a sadness issue or let's say actually I have a public speaking issue and I tried to do public speaking, you know, uh, a week ago and I froze on stage. So I ask you to connect to the memory, connect to the emotion, find it in your body, connect to the beliefs associated with it and map it, like get a sense of the territory in your own sensing of where all those things exist. And if you can start to integrate all those those kind of multifaceted levels of sensing, then we start to be able to have insight. And then we start to be able to have much more integrated, full system, comprehensive change taking place. Right. So do you need to be more sensitive? Like the more sensitive you are, the better it works for you? I mean, sensitivity is part of the practice of energy work. I mean, it's it's a you could call it a palpation skill, you know, like A body worker uses palpation. That means that, you know, they sense through their hands. So they put their hands on another person's body and they learn to listen to tissue. So that's the sensing skill for a body worker is called palpation. An energy worker's sensing ability or palpation skill is called subtle sensing, you know, call it extrasensory perception, call it psychic abilities. It doesn't always have to translate as psychic because some of them, they're very kinesthetic. They're very not traditionally psychic in the sense that it's very kind of mundane and basic in the sense that you can really start to place your attention somewhere in your body and you notice that there's 
openness or close, closedness or, or flow or a lack of flow. And that's something that isn't traditionally what we think of as a psychic ability, but is very much an important sensing ability when it comes to uh, reading your field. So when you were walking us through this, you told us earlier that you don't really see auras anymore because you're seeing much deeper in that and deeper into our energy field. And you close your eyes and it's all black and you can see everything. Is that Was that going on while you were walking us through this process? Yeah. Ooh, so what did they look like? <laughs> <laughs> it looked like a pink pony. <laughs> no, I mean, is it... we were doing a group practice. I, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to get very involved with either of you as individuals in terms of reading things and stuff because, for, for various reasons, it wasn't really the intent or the agreement of the session. And furthermore, when it comes to group group sessions, I tend to stay more with the the group dynamic rather than individuals. And so, Christabel and I, when we facilitate group sessions, we kind of zoom in and zoom out on individuals, but our primary attendance is to the group field. And so that, that, that has, it has a different dynamic. When, when I work one-on-one -on -one with somebody, I'm really, really locked in on what's going on with them and working with that, the interplay between my energy system and theirs and how to navigate that most effectively for healing work to take place. Yeah, I can imagine that one-on-one -on -one must be pretty intense, amazingly powerful. Yes, absolutely. Because the group healing was pretty cool as it is. I can't mm -hmm. imagine if you actually tune in to me and go, <laughs> Get that out of there. <clears throat> That's cool. All right. All right. So then you teach this to a lot of people. You have worked on a lot of people. You must have some pretty amazing transformational stories that come from this modality. Can you share one or two, like the ones that really smack you in the face with us? Mm. Yeah, you know, God, there are so many things. The main thing that comes out overall, which I just find most I don't know. Like, I like this aspect because it seems not exciting, but to me, it's the most exciting. Okay. Like, you, you, there are a lot of people who have these ready made stories that they tell, and, you know, they're like teachers or whatever. And they're like, this person couldn't lift their arm, and now they lift their arms. And it's just like, it happened in a day. And it's just, ah, you know. Um, <laughs> Especially the like, ha ha part. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, I mean, look, somebody, somebody last weekend said, Oh, I have, I've had this pain in my back for like 30 years and I do these exercises. I know them well. They've been doing work with us for a year and a half. They're like, I have pain in my back for 30 years. I do these exercises every day. I have a physio, all kinds of stuff. Literally after the session, there's just no pain in my back. It was there before the session and now it's gone and it's sustained wow. for the whole weekend. So, oh, wow. you know, just, an instantaneous change that had to do with the tools and the depth and the level we were working with in the more advanced kind of course kind of thing. But in general, overall, what we are just hearing over and over and over again is that people are coming out the other side of doing our trainings, the, the long ones in particular, because that's when we really see the ability to you know be with people over a long stretch of time rather than just a weekend. And that's why mm -hmm. we have set up the courses as we have, because we, we know that deeper transformation work doesn't happen overnight. Usually it's about, you know, a season or half a year or a year at least, you know, and, and having that guidance and support continue to help you walk further and further along the path um, a lot during that time. But in general, the thing that we just keep hearing over and over again is people just feel like they are so much more peaceful and present in life for whatever's coming up. So they just feel like they're not the same person anymore. You know, stress happens, it's not stressful anymore. Or stress happens and they go, I can't believe that I was able to deal with this situation without getting imbalanced, without indulging my emotions in a way that made me ineffective. And that regardless of what was happening, even if I was slightly stressful, I had that ability to watch, to witness that, that deep inner peace in the background that was abiding that enabled them to to connect and be with life much more fully and effectively. And to me, that's really the proof in the pudding. And that's, you know, that's what keeps changing in me over time. That's been the main thing that I notice. There's some times where during my own transformational process, I've had periods of being ecstatic. I had like months and years of times of being in states of almost like ecstasy and rapture where I had so much joy flowing through me. It was overwhelming because of, you know, making deep changes in myself, letting go of deep shadow elements or you know, blockages and things that were extremely challenging to get to. And when they started to change, it brought back all of those qualities that we talk about as inner child, innocence, love, joy, just things were just so just 
exploding out of me, you know, like a geyser for periods of time. Mm-hmm. But, but what, but the one thing though, that has been steady throughout all change has been a deepening of, of inner peace and contentment, regardless of external circumstance. And, and sign people sign me up. Yeah. This is huge. Sign me up. Huge. Yeah. Well, well, this is the kind of the carrier for all the work Christabel and I are doing is that it's not just energy healing. You know, we're really coming from both the healing tradition, but for me, I'm, I very much come from a more of like a, an enlightenment, awakening tradition, meditation, et cetera, where the point is to end suffering, you know, like a mm. Eastern tradition, Buddhist yoga. The idea is to be able to find that it there's this thing that we, you know, for people like really tuning in right now, there's this thing where it doesn't matter what's happening outside of you. There is an ability, a human potential to allow yourself to discover that there is freedom at every single moment to not have any imbalance internally, meaning it doesn't matter what's happening out there. You can be in perfect equilibrium inside and free and awake and present regardless of what's happening out there. Now, that's a an ultimate, but we can take steps along the way in which somebody goes from that being 5% accessible to 30%, to 50%, to 70% accessible until when you change those over time, like six months, a year, two years, five years, a decade, two decades, you're a person who can't even recognize what it used to be like to have an experience in the past because you don't have any of the same kinds of dysfunctional reactions to it anymore. Wow. You know, and that's, just, that's called being present, <laughs> truly yeah. present. I just saw you channel that whole thing. Just <laughs> you changed. You were somebody else when you're giving that message. You know, it's one of the most powerful messages that we can kind of get is, you know, life is challenging. It just, it just is. Life is challenging. It's nobody has an easy life. I don't care wh- where you grow up, who you are, you know, whatever it looks like on the outside. Internally, life is challenging for everybody in one way mm-hmm. or another from their own perspective. So, the thing is, is we can't control what's outside. There's, it's never going to happen. There's no controlling outside of us. We can affect it. We can influence it, but we can't control it. Mm-hmm. If we ever were to use the term control in a way that is attractive, it's that you can control inside. Now, control might feel like a, a tight word, you know, but in a sense, though, we can cultivate what's inside of us to the degree that we no longer have to have our internal be predicated on the external in any way. That's what freedom is. That's, you know, like I said, Eastern tradition, awakening, enlightenment, that's my thrust, or at least that's my kind of the the bedrock from which all of my practice and, you know, study and inner process began and continues to be anchored in. And that is, you know, freedom. And I really like that term cultivate because then it is, it's a growth. You know, it's a spiritual growth. It's a growth of peace and calm and tranquility. I love that. Well, we cultivate are, it, not control. We are the universe's petri dish. Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> I love that. I was thinking of like a flower garden. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, on your website, you've got the courses laid out in, I think, three different ones, right? You've got the foundational one, which is a, the quick one, just to kind of give you an idea of what this is all about. And you've got the 101, right? 101? 100. 101. 100. I'd say 100, and then you have the 200, yep. right? And each one builds, well, no, actually one and two build one on top of the other. Two two builds on top of one foundation. Anyone can take it any time. Just give you, there's no prerequisite. One, 100 also has no prerequisite. You can just take it to start learning. And I know that you've got a couple events happening. So talk to us about that. How? What's the best way to someone get involved with this modality? Yeah. So we specialize in training. We do private session work, but Crystal and I both do private session work and we have a wonderful you know, clientele and we love doing one-on-one work. But the greater mission, certainly the purpose of field dynamics, otherwise we would just be two individual you know, healing practitioners, is to empower people to do this themselves. Because we find that if it's great to find therapists and, and healers and facilitators, it's wonderful. That becomes a support mechanism and a, and a way to you know, connect into your blind spots. But when it comes to what we find most effective is when people have their own resources, their own inner resources. So we have a foundations course, as you mentioned, that's 10 hours long. And we have that usually scheduled as a weekend intensive. That's one way to join us, no prerequisites. And it's like a taster. It's a wonderful course. It's like a microcosm of the longer course in that we kind of cover all the primary bases. 
and you walk away with a, a skill set with an energy healing practice just from that. The 100 is, uh, again, no prerequisites. A lot of people just start at that point, and that is generally online and six months long, live and online. And uh, we meet on select weekends, and we have one of those coming up in, um, actually, the next one's really, really soon, but we're sold out um, in 10 days from now. But when this gets published, I, I don't think that'll count. But we have, um, <laughs> we have well, one. I was it- going to say, I was going to say, I, I know when it is. And, and if we release it, when I think we're going to release it, you, if you you would have like three days, so you'd have to act really fast. <laughs> yeah. If anybody were to hear it and want to check in, we we might have an extra space, but I believe that we had an inquiry today for two more spots that technically might fill it up, but check it out. And the, the next one is going to be published. The, on, the next online version will be scheduled. That starts actually in the fall in October, but we are in the middle of that, we have an, our in-person version of it. And uh, that is happening mid-April through mid-May in Bali. So Ooh, some, some people are very like, the online version is perfect for them. They can do it from the comfort of their own home. And, you know, it, it's six months. So there's really a lot of time for integration with that. With Bali, it's uh, an in-person is going to be quite different. It's going to be 24 days. The six months smushed into 24 days. Now, for people who like in-person work, who want to be more hands-on, who want to have an immersive, intensive experience and who also want to do it in a cultural environment that is absolutely breathtaking and, and perfect and idyllic for this kind of kind of work, then Bali is the place to be. And that is mid-April through mid-May of this year. Okay. And I assume that no one's going to be voting anybody out uh, when they're, when they're oh, on God. the island, right? <laughs> he did pretty well. He held off most of the jokes until now. So I'm impressed. Good job, Will. Sorry. No, that was that was good, actually. I like that. No. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, see, Karen, that was good. He says that was good, Karen. Maybe, well, maybe you go. <laughs> I, grew, I grew up, I loved Survivor when I was younger. No, I, I'm still watching it every season. Okay, so then what is, if someone was interested in either the online course or going to Bali, and yes, I am, but the, the, <laughs> that's beside the point, or take the foundations course or learn more about field dynamics. What's the best way for someone to do that? Our website is fielddynamicshealing.com, simply put. Makes it super easy. Yep. But we're going to add a direct link to that in our show notes. So all you need to do, if you can't remember fielddynamics.com, is go to skepticmetaphysicians.com and you'll see in his episode page, you will see the link laid in directly in the show notes. So it's easy for you to get connected. And yes, we do need a lot more peace in this world. So I encourage anyone who can do it to go ahead and do it because then I can lean on you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys are, and you guys are more than welcome. Come out to Bali if you, sounds like you're excited by being in Bali. You're, you uh, guys are welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. You know what? Be careful because we're the key people, kind of people that will show up. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Keith, yeah, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing uh, with us your modality, which sounds just amazing. And it felt amazing. It really well. did. I really appreciate you taking the time and doing that for us. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to both of you. And uh, it's very fun, by the way. You guys have a playful manner in doing this, as you're well aware. And uh, I appreciate <laughs> that. Like you said, these subjects, which can be heavy, to deal with them with levity. So I very much appreciate that. And uh, thanks to everyone who's checked this out as well and listened. Much appreciated. Very cool. And if you listen to this and you do sign up for the course, come back to us. Let us know how the course is because I really want to do it. And I don't want to do it unless you tell me that's good. So go ahead, <laughs> go ahead and do it. I know it's good. I'm only teasing, but do go. And we'd love some feedback. We'd love to hear how, when you go, even the foundation course, just how does it feel? How was it for you? Because uh, getting that kind of feedback is really helpful for us as well. We know that we're making a difference at that point. So, Once again, Keith, thank you so much for coming on. And we look forward to seeing you in Bali. <laughs> be there, be there, or be square, Gilligan. Right. <laughs> All right. Take care. All right. Thank you. And a huge thank you to you. We'd love for you to contribute by sending us a voicemail or an email from our website or leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or any other podcasting platform that supports them. Karen and I love hearing from those that are moved to message us. It truly does fuel our passion. You are the reason we do this show. And knowing what you like and don't like help us craft the very best show we can so that we can help raise the vibration of the planet together. Well, that's all for now. We'll see you on the next episode of The Skeptic Metaphysician. Until then, take care.